Face, popping, technique. Just stick your finger in, hook, and pull. Easy, right? Yeah. And no. If you pop with bad technique, you won't stand a chance of slapping and popping at actual song speeds. In this video, I'll show you the core essentials of popping for thumb up or thumb down slapping, how beginners kill their slap with bad popping technique, and the teeter-totter technique that all pro slappers use to keep their slaps and pops flowing easily, even at crazy speeds. But before I get to the all-important teeter-totter technique, let's quickly make sure you've got three slap and pop core essentials in place. First, you need good slap technique. I've talked about the slap technique in mega detail already in my idiot proof slap video, but here's a quick rundown. Rotate the forearm, don't wiggle the thumb. Hit with the outside edge. Relax your thumb so it bounces off the string. Next, you need to dial in your pops. Popping is where you use your finger to snap a string against the fretboard, creating a pop or snap sound. So let's dig into how to do it, starting with the thumb up popping technique as used by Larry Graham, Victor Wooten, Mark King, Rhonda Smith, Les Claypool, and most other thumb up slappers. This is also the way I teach you how to pop in the slap module of my Beginner to Badass course over at BassBuzz.com. So get your arm into your slap position and hook your index finger under the G string. It's easiest on the G string because there are no strings above to get in your way. Now just rotate your forearm back with some tension in your finger and the string should snap like that. There should be very little actual finger movement. Just like with slap, it's all about the forearm rotation. And the string should make a diagonal line on your finger like this on the edge closest to your thumb. If you're a thumb down slapper, the technique is pretty similar. This is the style of popping you'll see from folks like Ryan Martini, Dirt Lance, Tim Comerford, and Chris Wolstenholm. So get in your thumb down position. You're still just hooking your index finger under the string and rotating the forearm back. But now since your hand angle has changed, you'll be more centered on your finger instead of on the edge. So that's bass popping technique as it's most commonly used for classic slapping and popping. I can wait till the slap bass solo comes in, ready? Slap bass, turn it off, you didn't like it. You like slap bass. But there are a couple variations that might help you find your groove. First up, Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers uses his middle finger to pop. I will slap down with my thumb, and then with my middle finger, it will go underneath the D string and pull up like this. Using your middle finger might feel more natural if you're slapping with your thumb at an extreme downward angle like Flea. Also, Lewis Johnson, one of the grandfathers of slap bass, sometimes used arm motion to snap the string off the fretboard in addition to the forearm rotation. This helped add more muscle to his pops and create more of a visual performance with arms flailing around, but at the expense of some technique efficiency. So try out those variations, see what works for you, but I don't recommend using the finger isolated to pop like this or flexing the wrist upwards to get the pop like this. It'll tire your forearm out, create muting issues, and it'll mess up the teeter-totter technique that we're gonna get to in a minute. The last core essential we need to cover is minimum viable pressure. Here's the deal, if you start learning how to slap the bass, you will get blisters. To avoid annihilating your pop finger, learn to be an MVP and use minimum viable pressure. Just enough tension in the finger to get that pop snap sound and no more. Try this out with me. Let's make the motion of popping, but relax your fingertip so it doesn't really resist the string when you rotate up. Now it just sounds like a normal pluck, right? There's no snap sound. So gradually add more tension to your fingertip, bit by bit, until there you are, you're hearing the snap. So that's your sweet spot. Any more tension than that will just put resistance on the string that you don't need, and you'll wear out your finger faster. And if you use way too much tension, your pop won't even happen. You'll just keep holding on to the string out, uh, out. Also, quick tip, make sure your action, the distance between the string and the fretboard, is low enough. If your action is too high, it's gonna require more pressure to get the snap sound, which is gonna wear out your finger faster. So if there's more than about five millimeters of clearance between your E string and your 12th fret wire, I recommend that you get a setup. Okay, so that's your slap and pop essentials covered, but without the mythical teeter-totter technique, you'll struggle to slap and pop in real time. So let's dig into that. 
Whether you're slapping thumb up, thumb down, using all forearm rotation to pop, or using some arm motion as well, it all comes down to finding a smooth slap and pop flow using what we'll call the teeter-totter technique. Nail this and you'll be able to keep up with the slap shredders, miss it and you'll struggle with even basic slap lines. So here's how it works. If you have good slap technique, your thumb will bounce off the string after each slap without rotating the forearm back up like this. So your slap should be done at this point. And here's why this bounce is so crucial. With your hand in this position, you're automatically set up to pop just by rotating back the way you came. And now you're back to where you started, ready to slap. Slap, pop, slap, pop. So why are we calling this the teeter-totter technique? Well, on a teeter-totter, which is also called a seesaw, one person pushes off the ground, which sets the other person up to do the same. Similarly, the slapping motion puts your hand in position to be able to pop, which then puts you back in slap-ready position. Beginners commonly miss out on this teeter-totter by doing this. Adding extra cycles of rotation, so the slap goes down and up, and now you have to come back down to get the pop and go up, which is totally impractical because it wastes time and energy, making it impossible to play fast. So it takes you two full rotations, down, up, down, up, to get slap and pop instead of just one, down, up. When you teeter-totter properly, adding pops to your lines isn't really any more work, as if you're slapping, the potential for the pop is already there in the rotation, you just have to get the finger hooked in. And that's why you really need to have that thumb relaxed so that it bounces off the string without rotating the forearm back. And that sets you up to use the teeter-totter to grab your pops on the way up. Another way to use the teeter-totter is to click like on this video, which then sets your cursor up to subscribe to Bass Buzz and click the bell for notifications when new lessons come out. What an amazing, versatile technique. Let's try it out. We're going to play some Jamiroquai in a minute, but first let's practice the teeter-totter together with a super simple drill, just slapping the open E string and popping the open G string. No fretted notes to worry about so you can focus on an efficient teeter-totter with no wasted movement. And you see those T's and P's under the sheet music? The T stands for thumb, which means slap, and the P stands for pop. So here we go, nice and slow, with some drums. Here we go, one, two, three, Four, slap, pop, slap, pop. Just focusing on the teeter-totter and the forearm rotation. We've got a nice boring backing track so you can stay focused on technique and tone. So once you can play that, which was quarter notes at 70 beats per minute, just start speeding it up a few beats per minute at a time, over time, until eventually you can slap and pop eighth notes at 100 beats per minute, like this. That could take months of daily practice, but it's a reasonable goal to be able to keep up with common slap lines. Now let's work that same drill, but we'll move the pop to the D string. And this adds a significant accuracy challenge because you now have to tuck your popping finger in without the G string getting in your way. Eventually you'll have the muscle memory to get your pop finger on the right string every time. Be patient in the meantime, grasshopper, and make sure you're keeping your teeter-totter working even though you're focusing on popping the D string. So let's try this some more, nice and slow again. One, two, three, four. Nice work! Let's use our teeter-totter and play some real music. This is the intro riff to Emergency on Planet Earth by Jamiroquai with Stuart Zender killing it on the bass. Uh, this is a really simple riff. It's just roots and octaves which gives us a nice slap and pop workout. So we're going to start with our index finger on the third fret of the E string for a slap and then our pinky finger on the fifth fret of the D string for our first pop. And this is gonna be that tricky popping on the D string again, so it's gonna take some practice to be accurate with that. Okay, so index pinky, 
and then slide the same thing down. Index on the first fret of the E string, pinky on the third fret of the D string for a slap and a pop. And then we go up, same pattern, uh, index on the sixth fret of the A string, pinky on the eighth fret of the G string for a slap and a pop. And then we just have a root, so we're gonna set ourselves up for the next part, play the fifth fret of the A string with our pinky and then index finger on the third fret of the A string, pinky finger on the fifth fret of the G string for a slap and a pop. Go up two frets, index on the fifth fret of the A string, pinky on the seventh fret of the G string. Up another fret, index on the sixth fret of the A string, pinky on the eighth fret of the G string. Last couple notes, we'll play with our middle finger on the fourth fret of the E string and that sets us up for the beginning again. All right, let's funk it up and play this thing. Don't forget to teeter-totter efficiently. One, two, three, four, and we're in. Here we go. One, two, three, four. teeter-totter isn't the only piece of playground equipment you can use for slapping. Here's the merry-go-round technique. The swing set slap. And the monkey bars. 